Hi, my name is Marley and today I'm going to show you how to make paella. Paella is a Spanish rice dish originally from Valencia. It's not only one of the best known dishes in Spanish cuisine, and many of us see it as Spain's national dish, but the Spanish almost unanimously consider it to be a dish from the Valencian region. The Valencians in turn regard paella as one of their identifying symbols. So without further ado, let's start. First, I have to peel and chop some onions. So here we are, I have peeled the onions, and I have my trusty chopper. Honestly, when you're in the kitchen, try and make life easy for you by getting one of these choppers that does absolutely all the chopping and cutting that you require in the kitchen. And when you're using tomatoes, get chopped tin tomatoes like I've done here. This is Italian Italian chopped tomatoes. And then for peppers, I've got ready prepared ones. And the herbs, I can just chop it quite easily. And the beans and the green peas, I have got them prepared already. So here we go. I'm going to chop the onions. This is going to be a little bit noisy, but bear with. and easy with that. So let me tell you a little bit more about paellas. There are three types of paellas. One is called paella valenciana. It consists of round grain rice which we have here. So it's round, the grains are round and it is short grain. The second one is called paella de marisco which is what we are making today. It's a seafood paella which has the seafood, the short grain rice, leaves, and beans are left out but paella is such a popular dish it's so popular throughout the mediterranean throughout spain and even internationally there's several variations many many variations and the ones we're making today is the seafood paella which is known as paella de marisco but we're going to include the beans and the peas so here i am writing my gas hops for the first time. I've never used this before. Um, it seems a little bit sinister if we're out here and I'm using this for the first time and I'm just figuring out how to get the flame. So get a large white pan on each like so and then first we use olive oil. So first olive oil in the pan. I'm going to use as little oil as possible so I want to make a skinny plate. I'm going to be using a garlic and herbal dressing towards the end, which I'm going to use olive oil for. So here I want to put about a tablespoon and a half of olive oil in each of these pan. So there we go. And that olive oil is extra virgin and it's very vibrant green. So to that I shall add our onions. I've got finely chopped. I've, I've split it half. I split it down the middle. I made sure that the, the flame is the same on both parts. I can increase it if I want it. At the moment, it seems fine. Can you see right inside the pan? There we go. And then next, I shall add some butter. Again, with butter, I'm adding as little as possible. So it's about, it's about three quarters of a tablespoon. That's for flavor. So as I said, this is an international variation, so you probably wouldn't see it being put in Spain, so it's not the very original version. There we go, with butter. And then, you need to add garlic. I just want to get the onions a bit translucent and then I'll add the garlic and also I can control the amount of fire. It's quite different to the hogs we I'm used to inside the house. So there are three types of paella as I said. The first one is called a paella valenciana. 
Paella Valencia is where you use chicken, duck, or even sometimes rabbit. Paella de Marisco is where you use fish only. But there's also another one, another variety called Paella Mixta. And as the word would suggest, it's mixed. So you have lamb, chicken, beef, pork, fish, everything, including vegetables. But that's for another day. So here goes garlic. So now I'm getting very close to putting the rice in. So garlic is one tablespoon in each. So here I've got the onions and the garlic cooked. The aroma is amazing. So now when everyone else will be grating some tomatoes into it, I shall open a Italian chopped tomatoes and I'm just going to pour it straight in. There it goes. Tomatoes are gently simmering away. Same here. Gently simmering away. So now I'm going to flatten it like so. And usually what you would do for a paella is have stock. It can be chicken stock, beef stock or even vegetable stock. In my case, I'm not going to use any of the stock to cook rice. I'm just going to use plain water. And I'm going to tell you why I'm doing that. So ginger is not really an ingredient that goes in here, but as we're using fish, I like to add just about a quarter of a tablespoon of ginger. Ginger has the lovely sweet flavor, as well as the freshness. It's important when you cook seafood. So I'm just putting some ginger in there, dotting it and mixing it in. So now I'm ready to add the rice. So here I have um, pudding rice, it's called pudding rice. Basically, all you have to make sure is that the rice grains are short, so they're round, like so. They're not the long grain and they're not that smashy, so they're round and, and short grain. So I'm going to add rice just to cover the pan. So I'd say it's two cups of rice in each pan. So while I'm pouring it in, I am actually holding the rest so I know that it's just and then you keep stirring the rice in make sure that every grain of rice is coated thoroughly in this lovely tomato onion garlic ginger and olive oil and butter mixture that you have so carefully made so do that make sure you do that same again on the other side. So that's well coated. And then I go to the other side. In fact, I can afford to have a spoon each. So this is the other spoon. I do the same again. Make sure that every grain of rice is coated in this amazing flavor for tomato, onion, garlic, ginger mixture. So I've just flattened it. And the star ingredient for paella is a saffron. So we have saffron here. Apparently hundreds of flowers go into making a tiny jar like this of saffron. This one's called the finest pure mancha Spanish saffron. See, it's Spanish. So choose everything Spanish. So I'm only going to need a pinch each. So even when I take it out, I'm going to hold it above the pan so that I don't lose any. You take the saffron in your palm, just crush it, and then sprinkle it. And when you add the water to your rice, the saffron will permeate its amazing color. Not least its color, but also its authentic, amazing flavors. So just crush it in your palm and then sprinkle it like so. Now I'm not going to add any stock. I'm just going to use water. Just make sure that it's a two centimeters and a half, so an inch higher than the level of the rice. So here we go. And then you have enough water 
to cook the rice. There you go. And same again on this side. An inch higher than the level of the rice. An inch is two and a half centimeters. And there we go. There. So what, what I'm trying to do now is to get it to a bubble and then leave it to simmer for 20 minutes. Before I leave it to simmer, I'm going to add the lovely, amazing, wonderful seafood. So before I add the seafood, I'm going to season it with salt. So seasoning with salt is just pick up some or we'll just season it like you would salt your chips as I call this. So about half a tablespoon of salt in each. So I'm going to for the time being reduce the flame as much as I can because adding the fish is going to take a couple of minutes so I don't want the rice to start burning. So here I have some squid rings and here I have some paddock fillets which I also have some prawns which I go in and this is going to be the star of the show which is langoustines. They have eyes and all, so if you're a vegetarian, avert your eyes. And with the fish, I'm going to put some fresh salmon as well. So, the reason I said I'm not going to use any stock is purely because I'm going to cook the fish now itself. And the fish will start releasing all its flavors and juices into the rice, which will in, in turn flavor the rice as opposed to adding stock. And dip higher, you don't stir it. Once you've added your seafood, you just leave it for it to gently cook. And therefore, you have to add it in a beautiful design like so. So I'm putting the prawns the same angle, dotting them around the edges of the pan, like so. And also, this, these prawns have got their shells on. So how people actually make fish stock is by using the shells of the fish and the bones of the fish. So here, by keeping the shell on, you're automatically creating your own stock. So I've gone one full round, now I'm going a second round, like so. I have to be quick because from here onwards, the rice only takes 20 minutes to cook. So it's a very quick and easy, stylish, wonderful dish. So here we go. You will see all the seafood once the rice has absorbed all the water. So now goes the prawns and the other dish. So these prawns are peeled. So they go like so, dotting them around. So once you've added all your seafood, you will not stir the rice, you'll just leave it to cook in a light simmer on medium to low heat for 20 minutes. And what you expect at the end is for all the fish to release its beautiful juices to the bottom. So it's almost like a caramelized juices from the fish, the sweet juices to settle at the bottom of the pan and then the starch from the rice it creates what the Spanish call a socaret. So first I thought it was chocolate and true to its word it seems like a good description everybody likes chocolate. So socaret is the caramelized fish sauce with the starch of the rice that, that creates this crust at the bottom and that's what everybody loves to have a part of when they serve themselves the paella. So here we go. We've dotted the prawns around the pan here. And next I'm going to use the squid rings. So this is the last two. Oh, and now I'm putting the squid rings. The squid rings look like that. So that I'm going to dot between the in between the prawns like so. These are going to release the most amazing seafood flavors into the rice. There we go. And also, usually when paella is cooked and 
when paella marisco is cooked. They add the seafood towards the end of the cooking, almost the last five minutes of the cooking. And that's because fish only takes a few minutes to cook. And sometimes squid can become, not sometimes, but most often they're not. It can become like rubber, chewy and rubbery. So that's the reason squid or any seafood is added towards the end. What I'm doing here is adding it at the beginning so that it release its juices, create a stop. And also, if I, for the first few minutes, yes, it's going to cook and it's going to be tender. And for the next 10 minutes, it's going to become hard. And then when I continue to cook for the remainder of the 20 minutes, what it's likely to do is to get soft again. And in doing so, we get all the juices from the seafood released into the beautiful rice, permeating it with the most amazing flavor and fragrance. So this packet has three pulls in this rice. And then for this paella, I want to add some salmon pieces and also some haddock. I'm going to cut each of these pieces into three and then dot it in the middle here. So here I've skinned and cut the salmon into one inch cubes. So I'm going to dot them in the middle like so. And the smaller pieces will go in the middle. We come to the other paella where I'm going to use a lamb steam instead of the salmon fish. So this one's actually got claws, whilst that one didn't, so maybe it's special. Prepare, just toss the beans in some olive oil, but I'm not putting those in because the pans are quite crowded. But I will dot 
a few of the garden peas in there because I'm cooking in the open. I have to make sure that nothing gets blown for the wind. Look at how beautiful that looks. And the salmon and the fish here looks divine. And what you can't experience is the amazing smells that are coming out of the two paella. So now I'm going to add some paprika, small paprika for flavor. I'm going to this one as well. Adds flavor and color. Mmm, the tongue. And then the other one together is here. The lovely rosemary. And last but not least, I'm going to add some of these lovely flame roasted red and yellow peppers. So in those days I'm going to use pimento, but I prefer to use peppers because it's ready roasted, it comes in a jar, all you have to do is just pull it out and slice it. So I'm going to put this and look at the beautiful red colour. So I'm going to use it alternately. So red, yellow, red, yellow. I shall cover it up and make it smooth for this. Like so. And now I'll do the same with the, with the other ones. is ready so you have to listen to it and you can hear the crackle of the rice. What, what that means is that the sokaret that we spoke about earlier is actually happening. So that's the sugars of the fish, the seafood, seeping through the rice and the starch of the rice together it caramelizes at the bottom of the pan. And now I'm going to make the lemony herby dressing to go on top. So if you remember I said I'm not going to add too much of oil because I wanted to make a lovely lemony dressing at the end. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I just sprinkled a little bit more rosemary in there. I'm also going to add some peas. So I'll take the peas in my pan, frozen peas, and then just dot it around like emerald green, lovely. Put the green peas on the edges. So I've actually zested two lemons. To that, I'm going to add one, two, three, four, four tablespoons of olive oil and then I shall put in there so this I'm making the lovely lemon herby dressing to go on top of our paellas so this is for both paellas so one and a half lemons may seem like a lot but we do need it so here we go And then for the herbs, I'm going to use some parsley. So I'm using the dried variety. 
If you have the fresh ones, you can use it. I'm also going to put a little bit of coriander. Also the dried variety. And I shall also chop some chives. So we give it a stir. I'll just season it with salt and then I will also add some parmesan cheese. seafood paella ready or paella de marisco is ready. So time for a taste test. So I actually changed to the flat spoon because I want to see, oh I, I don't even want to dig into it because it looks so beautiful. I want to see for the classic socarette if it has happened. Yes, so that's the crust that you're looking for. So if you were to go to a Spanish restaurant in Spain and you ordered paella and it didn't have the socorette, you can refuse to pay for it. Just kidding. I'll tell you what it's like and I promise you it's going to be good. It's very hot. So here I've got some squid and some onions. I'd like to serve myself some salmon from here. So I can't wait to taste it now. So I have a squid ring and some salmon. And now I'm going to try this corn. It's beautifully cooked through. Um, within the shell, it's craving some of its cooked juices. The rice is cooked, it still has a bite in the middle, and I do want to taste this ever so popular soccer rat. Mmm, 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 mmm. It's caramelized juices with the starch from the rice. It tastes amazing. So if you've enjoyed watching me make these amazing paellas, why don't you try making them at home for your friends, for your family. I promise you they're going to love you for it. So if you enjoyed watching my video, give it a thumbs up. And most of all, I would love for you to donate to the NHS. And if you're watching the video from any other part of the world, do a bit of research to see who's helping out during the pandemic and please donate. Thank you for watching. And bye-bye.